Going head-to-head -head on Britain's membership of the European Union, the Conservative backbencher Philip Davis, who wants Britain to leave the EU, and Laura Sands, former Conservative MP, who chairs the European Movement Group and is in favour of Britain staying in. Let me give you each 30 seconds just to lay out the, the, your stall and the headlines of your position. Start with you, Laura Sands. Well, I think it's absolutely crucial if you think that every single job in this country is probably seven degrees of separation from some form of export. I think we've got to ensure that we uh, stay in the European Union so that we can trade with Europe and the rest of the world. I think some people think that it's an either or. I actually think it's both. I also think there are some social issues that uh, Europe actually created legislation, regulation that supports maternity rights, equality, and as part of the European Union, those are irrevocable. Okay. But ultimately, this country needs to be at every top table it can be at. That's its history and that's its future. And so the idea of walking away from one of the, lar the largest uh, market in the world, I think would be very foolish. Thank you for that, Philip Davis. Well, there's a number of reasons why we need to leave, not least because it's the only way we can properly control immigration into the country. But above all else, we would be better off out of the EU. Every single year, the EU is a smaller and smaller part of the world's economy. Uh, all of the growth in the world economy is in China, India, South America, emerging economies in Africa. That's where all the future growth in the world economy is going to come from, and that's where we need to be. We built our wealth in this country by being global traders. And we should be ashamed of ourselves that we're handing over £19 billion a year to be part of a backward-looking, inward-facing protection racket, which is what the European Union has become, protecting the interests of inefficient European businesses and French farmers. We've got to be okay. much more global in outlook, much more international, much more positive about the, the world, not stuck in the 1970s. And, of course, we, we all want to trade with, the, right. with, the, with the EU. Okay. We, we will keep free trade you've, with the EU. That's, you both had a little more than 30 seconds, but not <laughs> too much more. Laura Sands, you say we should stay in to, uh, to trade. Mm. Why couldn't we trade if we were outside the EU? Well... Firstly, I think that we should be trading with Europe and the rest of the world. I, mm. I have more but, no, ambition. No, but what I'm asking but is why couldn't we continue we, we to, to... I mean, Switzerland is not yes. inside the EU, but per capita exports five times as much as we do to the EU. Yeah. So why couldn't we export... Well, I'm not sure what I call the twilight zone, sort of a uh, half in and half out is a very good option. I mean... Philip rightly talks about migration. Actually, they have a higher percentage of migration. Yeah, but I'm sorry, you're not do. answering. I'm not asking about migration. I'm asking you why we couldn't continue to trade with the EU we even could. if we were outside it. We could if we had a Norwegian or Swiss um, model. But we are not there setting the rules. We've got our neighbours setting the rules for us. We end up having to comply on a sector by sector basis. It will take 10 years to get the agreements in place. But on the migration issue, uh, Switzerland well, I'm, I'm sorry, and Nor I've got to come on to the migration. I want to stick with the trade for the, the minute, come on to cost and then migration. On the, the, the issue, we would continue to trade with the EU outside, but we would have no say in the rules of the game. At the moment, we helped to build the rules of the game. Indeed, we helped to build the single market. Why would you give that up? Well, there's two points. The first is I'm not sure that we have as much influence as, as, as that would suggest. I mean, very often we go to the European Union and we're outvoted because it's all done by qu quality, qualitative majority but voting. We, we created and the so, single market. And so, yes, but in all of these things where, we're actually, where the rules are being set, more often than not, we're outvoted. So we're not actually having a great say over the rules. The other point, uh, actually, is that this idea that we could only negotiate as good a deal as Switzerland and Norway is for the birds. We're the fifth or sixth biggest economy in the whole world. Now, we can do a much better, we can have a much better deal than anybody else. Last year, we had a balance of trade deficit, deficit with the EU, of £62 billion. So when people talk about all the jobs that are reliant on trade with the EU in this country, there, there are lots of jobs reliant on that. We're not going to stop that. But how many more jobs in the EU are dependent on trade with us. Sure. So Germany are never going to give up trade in BMWs and Mercedes into the UK. And so we can negotiate a very good deal for ourselves in terms of trade from outside of the What's EU the because they need us more than we need them. Larissa. Well, you've just said that Switzerland actually trades more with Europe than, than we do. So mm. there is actually, um, that, that's not a sort of very robust argument. But fundamentally, um, we need it all. We need to be trading internationally, but we need that trade and we need to have a say. And the idea that we don't have a say, we set standards in this country for all sorts of different things, both 
within the EU and internationally. It is absolutely crucial that our businesses have a say over the sorts of terms of an agreement by which that they will trade with Europe. Can right. I just let, say, let me, I, we need that, I want to move on to the migration issue because I know you both want to talk about that as well and I promised that we, we would. Let's take Switzerland again as an, as an example, not a member of the EU but pretty much has open borders with the EU in its mm. arrangement. Uh, and if we were to come to a non-membership arrangement, that is probably what Brussels would continue to demand of us in any post-membership arrangement. Our borders would have to continue to be porous. Well, I don't accept that uh, analysis. As it's I've, the Swiss as, position. As, well, I, as I've said at the outset, I think that we can do a far better than Switzerland, given that the EU is far more dependent on trading with us than we are of trading with them. So I, I don't accept that we can only negotiate a Swiss or a Norwegian deal. It, at the moment, we have absolutely no control over our borders whatsoever. The Prime Minister can set as many targets as he likes on immigration, knowing full well that there's nothing he can do to stop people coming into this country. We are taking people into this country in numbers that we cannot sustain. We cannot build the houses for them, they put a strain on our public services, and there's nothing, literally nothing, that the government can do to stop it. We need to leave the EU to control our borders. Laura Sands. I don't dispute that migration is an issue, but coming out of the EU or this twilight position isn't going to help it. If we want control over our borders, we will have to build a border between North and South Ireland. We will have to have visa control. If we want to trade with the rest of the world, we're going to have to relax those visa controls because otherwise we will not get free trade agreements. Ultimately, if the, the worst of all worlds, in my view, is a Swiss and Norwegian version, and they will not allow us to have access to the single market without free movement of labour. Well, of course they're going to allow us to have access to the, I, I can't make this point often enough, that they're going to have to allow us free access to the single market because they, Germany are not going to give up selling BMWs and Mercedes into the UK. But Laura talks about how we need uh, to have an input into all of these rules but we need to trade with the rest of the world. We have no say over trade deals with the rest of the world at the moment because they're all decided for us by the EU without any input from the UK whatsoever. So if we want to, if we want to have all of the advantages of trade around the world and relationships but, around the world, but, let's, but, be there, let's be there does, negotiating ourselves because at the Germany moment we have trades, no say. Germany over trades in countries where some of our diplomats don't even know how to spell the names. I mean, we are not restricted. Germany is not restricted by being part yeah. of the Europe. Well, if Germany There's can no do, Germany problem. Exports, we can have it all. Germany exports from where billions we are. to East Asia, which last time I looked was not in the European Union. What, so being a member of the That's EU big, doesn't stop Germany. What would stop us? No, what, what's, what we're stopped from doing is negotiating our own trade deals. Then he's a, but, nego but so is then, Germany. Yes. Th but they're still able to export no, masses to China, Japan, Abs well, South Korea, the, 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 the argument, Singapore. The argument works in reverse. China seems to be doing pretty well exporting to the, yeah. e to well, the EU without being, part of the, without being part of the EU. The point is, the EU negotiates the trade terms largely for the benefit of Germany. Yeah. If we want to negotiate our own trade deal with India or the Commonwealth or other countries in South America, we're not allowed to do so. The EU has to negotiate those trade deals for but us. We are part of the EU. We are a member of the EU. And if our, voice isn't, being, if our voice isn't being heard loud enough, then that's our responsibility. But ultimately, I think it is. And we actually have had quite a few trade commissioners I'm who have been Britain, have been British and have actually signed some I mean, very important our voice uh, quite strong when it comes to trade negotiations because if you take the current negotiations between the EU and uh, the United States, TTIP is the acronym, to create a huge free market. It's very controversial, a lot of people are against it. But that is a British initiative. I mean, Britain has been pushing to have this free trade area and we negotiate as part of the EU, which is big and economically powerful, with the United States, which is big and economically powerful. Don't we get more when two big uh, people negotiate together than a smaller one and a big one. We are big. We're the fifth or sixth largest economy in the world. Small to and, and the problem with the problem with this negotiation as part of one of 28 is that inevitably you go at the pace of the slowest. Mm -hmm. And so actually, given that we are committed free traders in the UK and given that countries like America are committed free traders, it's absolutely inevitable that we would have negotiated a better free trade agreement with the US long before the EU ever came to the table because they always go at the pace of the slowest. Switzerland, to come back to where we started, Switzerland has a trade arrangement with China, which is negotiated individually. Yes. And Switzerland exports a lot more to China than we do. Surely we could, Britain, it's history, seafaring, global trader, we could negotiate our own agreements, couldn't we not? Yes, we could, but actually what we've got is we've got the leverage of the European Union um, collectively, but we have shaped a lot of this agenda about international trade. 
And I would say that if you think about what America is looking for, they're looking for a European, I mean, they're excited about TTIP from the UK's perspective. The UK would be the place that they would come okay. for foreign investment to access those right, European I'm markets. Going to have to interrupt and leave it there. I thank you both. I think we've given our viewers a taste of things <laughs> to come in this debate between now and the referendum. Thank you.